Hey, David Bruce here with another episode of Chord Play, and this is the Chords of Extreme. And of course, we're going to be talking about Nuno Betancourt. And Nuno Betancourt is a monstrous guitarist that's been on the scene for a long time. And even though Extreme has kind of, you know, left the scene and returned and then left the scene, there's still a ton of players out there that love Nuno, you know, and definitely I'm a big fan. I've been following his music and his guitar playing, you know, for a very long time. And Extreme itself, you know, formed in Boston in 1985, and they had, you know, some success in the late 80s and early 90s with their self-titled debut, and uh, Porno Graffiti, which is a great album that's from 92, and, uh, or I'm sorry, 1990, and then Three Sides uh, to Every Story came out in 92, and that's also a great album, but I think Porno Graffiti, you know, had the hits like More Than Words and Wholehearted, and a lot of people thought of them almost like an acoustic group. But extreme rocks, you know, and their rock songs, you know, where Nuno can kind of strut his stuff, it's really inspiring. You know, there's tons of great licks and leads and fills and rhythm parts. And Nuno really is one of those players where his rhythms are almost as exciting as his leads. Kind of like Van Halen and Vito Brada and some players like that, where the solos are great, but then the rhythms and riffs and all that stuff are really great too. And just a phenomenal, you know, package player where he's got it all. He can sing, play, write a song, he can shred, you know, play a solo, he can do it all. The opening that was a month I don't want to go to school today uh, from the self-titled debut. And, you know, I know the first time I ever heard that song, it sounded like Van Halen's Unchained, but different and a little busier. And I just fell in love with it. I was like, what is going on, you know, with this extreme band, you know, and our, I think it came up on MTV, you know, it wasn't Headbangers Ball. I think they were doing like that hard 60 kind of show like during in the afternoon. And it just came on one day randomly when I was a kid and it perked my ears up. I was like, what is that? And sure enough, it was extreme. So this lesson's going to be tuned down a half step. But for this song, we're tuned down a half step and we're in drop D. Everything after this is just going to be in regular, you know, uh, down a half step tuning. But this is down a half step plus drop D. And it is very Van Halen-esque. And we're doing this D power chord, do a D sus4 in the beginning. And then he's just pummeling that low E, which is down to a D, or a D flat, technically. And he's just kind of hitting that sus4 there, you know, very much in the style of Van Halen. And then there's basically a G over B to a C power chord. And then that uh, G over B to a C is going to go to an A. And then he's also flirting with the sus4 right there with that A chord. Something like that. Second time, there he does everything the same except for the end. There's that little kind of squealy fill. And definitely Nuno has a knack for these really tasteful fills that, you know, draw interest and you're like, what was that little thing? You know, because he's always cramming uh, these interesting parts in kind of the nooks and crannies of his music. And that makes it exciting, you know, I think you kind of pick that up from Van Halen, because Van Halen does the same thing. You know, Van, you know, Eddie will play some chords, but then he almost always, you know, throws in some harmonics or a little fill or a run or something somewhere. And that keeps the intensity and the excitement up, where you're like, hey, what's going on? You know, what, what was that? You know, and did you hear that? And it just kind of gives you a, a treat for the ears. <laughs> that squeal. There we go. Right up next we have the song He-Man Woman Hater, which is from their 1990 album Porno Graffiti, and it looks and sounds like this. And there you can 
see we're starting with this A power chord. And then there's this really busy, kind of crammed uh, no uh, nine note run. So there's nine notes right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I've had more luck playing it that way. I've seen it transcribed some different ways and played uh, different ways. Instead of doing the open D string, you could actually fret that note right there. And you could also fret every single note and not play any open strings. But neither of those methods of playing that seem to work for me. It doesn't really sound like Nuno. Because I'm definitely hearing this blurry, kind of legato sound at the end. And he's keeping it really tight by dampening the strings. He's using a little bit of palm muting on that run, which gives it that kind of almost a growl kind of sound. And then just go to that C sus2 to a D. Slide these sixths. And you're kind of doing this little single note run there on the D. And you put all that together. We have the intro to uh, Cupid's Dead, which is from Three Sides to Every Story, and it looks like this. <laughs> There you can see in the beginning we're doing this E7, kind of an unusual, you know, fingering or voicing for it. And then it's moving to an A7, which is up here. Same shape. Just, you know, in a different location and using a different open string. We started with that low E. And then move to A. And you're gonna double that, do the E7 again extends this A7 where you're grabbing that C sharp there on the high E. And then the funky riff, that's basically the Hendrix chord, you know, E7 sharp 9 right there. And he basically, you know, moves up a half step to F7 sharp 9. That kind of reminds me of the Chili Peppers a little bit. throws in this crazy, you know, kind of a 30 second note strumming, you know, section in there. And I'm not really honestly sure if it was the second repeat or the third repeat, but it's in there somewhere. Um, but he's really just kind of playing around with that funky, you know, Hendrix chord, really. And then there's the single note line, which I couldn't help but, you know, add that in there too. <laughs> You know, riffs like that kind of helped people think of Extreme as a funk band, or like funk metal, as they usually described themselves in the early days. You know, get the funk out in some of those songs. People just associated, you know, the band with funk, and then they also associated it with acoustic guitar, thanks to, you know, More Than Words and Wholehearted. But they did a lot, you know, and they combined all these different influences. You know, they had Van Halen's influence, they had a Queen influence. Um, I mean, you can hear all this different stuff hiding in their music, which is really cool. And here's the title track, Porno Graffiti, uh, the song, Porno Graffiti. And there you 
can see we're basically doing some open string or open position uh, power chords. And this is really clever, the way Nuno is tapped into four chords. And he never leaves the second fret, you know, this open position area right there. Very crafty. Um, there's the E, there's a G, and the A, and then the D. So it's really cool the way he kind of combined those chords. And then there he just goes to an A power chord. And then he's sliding in to this little piece of A7. So it's kind of, you know, A flat into A, or A flat seven into A seven. You could also finger that right here. You know, same notes. But I'm hearing that kind of brighter sizzle, you know, you know, in the guitar part. Some of it's the tone he's using too. I think he's got this hot rotted, you know, probably a Marshall. Um, and you can hear that really kind of screaming top, you know, top end, the treble there. And that leads me to believe he's actually playing it on the treble strings instead of, you know, a little bit higher on the neck. This has kind of a warmer sound. You can do it either way. basically answers that with that uh, E to D power chord and then a B to an A power chord and just end with that low E power chord down there and chime in you know the top uh, two open strings and you're there you can see I switched to an acoustic guitar but I'm not going to show you more than words or wholehearted you know both of those songs have been covered and transcribed and featured and broken down for a long time but uh, I'm attempting to do something a little bit different. And this is the intro to the song Smoke Signals, which is from their first album, you know, the Extreme album. And I know the first time I heard the song, the intro just grabbed me because it's this really aggressive, bluesy kind of showcase or little, you know, uh, intro, basically. And it looks like this, it's really cool. <laughs> playing around with E7 and the acoustic you know is definitely in center stage or like the you know prominent in the mix but then occasionally he kind of revs up with an electric guitar and it makes it kind of hard to hear what the acoustic did when that electric kind of chimes in and then the acoustic disappears and the electric takes over and just plays a version of this riff but the intro it's really cool he's kind of flirting with E7 loosely and he's got this busy little and I even like the way it starts right there it's kind of uh, you know I don't know it's got this kind of sneaky feel to it and right there he's really just kind of playing with those double stops you know fourths part and it's aggressive you know and I think that's probably why I picked up on it when I first heard it because he's really digging in and banging on an acoustic which is so cool <laughs> President, which is from Porno Graffiti, and it only happens in the song one time. It's like this kind of a single note fill followed by a chord fill, and then it goes right back in the song. And it only happens once, but it's really cool. And it looks like this. <laughs> So right 
they were starting with this kind of, you know, scale-based run that's on the D and the G string. And we're kind of basically outlining uh, A mixolydian, technically. <laughs> Something like that. And then he's going to go back to this A power chord three times. And then you've got this super busy kind of, uh, you know, cascading chord kind of sequence that moves down uh, the G and the B strings. That's really interesting because we're going to start with an A way up here. And then an E over A, and then a D over A, and then back to E over A, and then D over A again, to A, and then B minor over A, to A, and then it slides up to A right there. So it's interesting the way he kind of mapped that out, where you're basically moving between E over A, D over A, and A. Eventually that B minor comes in too, but I like that kind of mix and match of the same chords, but we're moving, you know, lower and you hear the pitch change and it's interesting. <laughs> such a cool fill and it only happens once too where it's like you know if I wrote that I probably would have made the whole song based around that but Nuno just kind of throws it out there where it's like well you know here's a fill and it's like that's one of the coolest fills I've ever heard <laughs> Chords of Extreme, and definitely I'm a big Nuno Betancourt fan. I've been following him and his music since I was in high school, and he's always been a very exciting and thrilling player, you know, full of conviction and authority, and, you know, great tone, great licks and leads and riffs and rhythms and fills and all this stuff, and he can sing, too, which is totally not fair, you know. Um, he's like the complete package. He can play circles around almost anybody. And then he can sing while he's doing it, which it's like, that's totally not fair. Um, you know, pick one or the other. Don't, don't be great at both, you know, because, you know, I mean, that's simply something I wish I could do. But, uh, you know, he just delivers in spades where it's like, man, you know, what a great musician. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content material. Thank you.